Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So now that we're three days away from the start of the Stanley Cup final, Edmonton versus Florida, which I think is a fantastic matchup. I know some people are already saying that Edmonton doesn't have a chance. I think that's ridiculous. These are two very, very good teams. I wanted to turn to you guys about once a week on this page. I asked for your hot takes on my Instagram. You guys gave me like over a hundred. Thank you guys so much. You always deliver with the absolute heat, but I had to cut it down unfortunately to only 15. So we're going to go through them now. These very first from, it's about a certain player, special teams, will they show up, goaltending, everything and everything about the guy, everything and everything, I don't know if that's a saying, that's not a saying, but everything about this Stanley Cup final, we're going to go through it right now, we're going to react to your hot takes, and tell you whether it's somewhat realistic, or if it's just far, far too hot, so let's get into it, up first, JK1910, he says, Dreisaitl will outscore McDavid and takes home the Conn Smythe, and yeah, I was pretty surprised when I checked my sports book once, like Monday morning, to get kind of the odds on the Stanley Cup final. And McDavid sitting at plus 200, Dreisaitl's all the way at plus 950 on FanDuel. And when looking at it in the first two rounds of the playoffs, Dreisaitl definitely was the so called MVP for the Edmonton Oilers. I kept on saying that McDavid was still more likely to win it eventually, just because if they were going to beat Dallas, if they were going to beat Florida, he'd have to go nuclear. But at that value point, I'd probably rather bet Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl does have more goals in these playoffs as of right now. The points are roughly the same. You look at it with the Florida Panthers team, we're going to talk about it later, but Barkov's probably going to be more so on McDavid, so maybe Dreisaitl will get more favorable matchups. He is kind of the go-to shooter on the power play. It is definitely possible that Dreisaitl could win the Conn Smythe. It would not shock me at all. Next up, Charlie Hearn, 28. Edmonton special teams fall apart in Florida in maximum five games. And yeah, Edmonton special teams is their bread and butter, especially in this year's playoffs. The power play really came alive in the final two games against Dallas. They had two power play goals in back-to-back -back games in game five and game six. And their penalty kill was fantastic against Dallas. I don't think it's going to be as good against Florida, but it's going to have to be if they're going to need a chance. So you're not going to kill basically every single penalty, but Edmonton is going to have to have a very good showing in terms of their special teams. Because I think we can agree at five, Five on five, especially when McDavid and Dreisaitl aren't on the ice, Edmonton is going to be at a, de a decent disadvantage. I think there's going to be a couple games or game or two in this series where you're probably going to concede a goal or two on Edmonton power play. That's kind of just... It, you, you can't hold them for four or five games without having a one game where they kind of explode offensively, but... It definitely could happen. If they only convert at 10, 12% of their power plays, I'd say Florida has like a 90, 95% chance of winning this goddamn series. Next up, Edmonton end up having the best goaltending. And yeah, Stuart Skinner played great in the conference finals against the Dallas Stars. I believe he had a 923 save percentage in that final game, stopped 34 out of 35 shots. He's been very good. Now, I do think Bobrovsky is a better goaltender just based on what he did last year in the playoffs this year regular season. He's not having the best playoffs overall, but I would still say Bobrovsky is the better goaltender, but people are acting like Stuart Skinner is hot garbage. Yes, he did have some bad low lights against the Vancouver Canucks, against the LA Kings at times, but besides that, he's been pretty solid. And even at the start of the regular season, he was horrible, but so was Jack Campbell, so was the Edmonton Oilers. And then the back three quarters of the season. He was like a 9-10, 9-15 goaltender. So Stuart Skinner, it, it's, I don't know that much confidence in him, but he has definitely proven that he can at least play okay in front of Edmonton as long as they're not giving up a ton of chances. Next up, Carter Verhage for the Con Smythe. And when looking at Carter Verhage right now, I think that he'd also be a pretty decent value play considering he has nine goals, eight assists, leads the Florida Panthers in goals. He's one point behind Matthew Kachuk. So in looking at him, he is Mr. Clutch for them. He's like tied for the fourth or fifth most overtime playoff goals of all time. It's only like Joe Sackick and I forget who's tied at second. He's, he's tied for third, I believe, with like Patrick Kane and a bunch of other all-time greats. So Carter Verhage, if he has a good series, I definitely could see him win the Conn Smythe, one of the most underrated players that seemingly always comes through for the Florida Panthers when they need him in crunch time. Next up, Barkov will shut down. This comes to us from Fly with Tori. Let me give this shout out to the other guy that was just up, Mark. Thank you for that. But Fly Latori, he says Barkov will shut down and hold McDavid to less than seven points. If McDavid, this goes five or six games and McDavid only has seven points, which again, that's really good for any other player, but he is going to get some criticism. And yeah, that, that, that is such a massive 
matchup in this series. I don't think I'm shocking anybody with that take. You got the best defensive center in the entire NHL against a guy that is scoring at a rate of two points per game, and we're not even surprised by that. That is going to be the grudge match, as well as guys like Forsling trying to shut down a guy like McDavid in transition. I believe in Paul Maurice to really optimize the matchups in terms of putting guys on the ice when McDavid's t- when McDavid and Dreisaitl are out there. I do trust Paul Maurice, and I could see that. Yeah, if you told me that McDavid's only going to score at a rate of 1.3 points per game, which again is still nuts. I would say Florida's probably winning that series in five or six games. I I think if you're a Florida Panthers fan and say the series goes six and you only give up nine to 10 points with McDavid, I think you live with that as well. That is how good and how explosive him and Dreisaitl have been this year's playoffs. Anything below two points per game is kind of like a job well done. Now I can't see below seven again, unless it's a sweep or even, even a five game series. I think he probably gets to eight points. You're just going to have one game where McDavid racks up three or four points. I think, I think that's kind of inevitable. I don't really see a sweep happening, but Barkov, it is going to be massive for him in terms of shutting down McDavid. Next up, this comes to us from Gervais. He says, Evander Kane is the series best player, six goals and three assists. I don't think that he's going to be the best player of the series, but could Evander Kane on that second line with Dreisaitl surprise some people and score four or five goals across this series it's definitely possible people forget although he was playing with McDavid at the time the dude had 13 goals and I believe 15 or 16 playoff games back in 2022 so if they can get secondary scoring and it, he does play in their top six so it's not a ton of secondary when you think it's what secondary you usually think bottom six but if Evander Kane can show up in a big way and he kind of hasn't this year in the playoffs that's going to be massive for the Edmonton Oilers because Evander Kane not the best five on five possession guy but he can absolutely go on a heater in terms of scoring goals. So Evander Kane is kind of a massive X-factor wild card in this series. If you told me Evander Kane scoring four goals in this series, I'd say Edmonton has a really good chance at winning this series. Next up, Smelly It. I don't really know what kind of username that is, but this finals will be similar to last year and that the Oilers are overhyped the way that the Panthers were last year. I get what you mean by that. Consider... I I get what you mean because Panthers are more so the Vegas Golden Knights this year. Win their division, no identifiable weakness, physical team. I get that comparison, but I don't like the comparison of the eight seed Panthers that just barely squeaked into the playoffs compared to the Edmonton Oilers that were the best team in the entire NHL from game 20 to 82 in the regular season. Like the Edmonton Oilers, rightfully so, are one of the best teams in the entire NHL. I I get you could maybe say they're overhyped. But they were just so good in the final three quarters of the season. If you watch them play, you shouldn't be that shocked. Now, could you say that they're top loaded? And again, a guy like Barkov might shut them down. A guy like Bennett might get in someone's face. Possible. But to say that the Edmonton Oilers are overhyped at this point, I don't really get where people are coming from with that. They've proved you wrong at every single stretch for the most part. We got one from Colin O'Keefe. Bouchard gets the con Smythe. I think that this is a little bit of a too hot of a take, even though he's at like 10 to 1. Like he's him and Dreisel have like basically the same odds. I don't know if this is going to happen. Maybe I could see the logic considering McDavid and Dreisel so good, both forwards, but you have the one defenseman that goes off. Maybe that's why. And again, he's having a historic run. But when thinking about who's the most valuable player to the Edmonton Oilers, Evan Bouchard's fantastic. Fan freaking tastic broke out top 10 defenseman for me this season and just overall at this point but in terms of winning the entire con Smythe, he'd have to ball out Edmonton would have to give up like 2.2 goals per game in this series his advanced stats would have to be off the mark it's possible but I would say he's more like 20 to 1 25 to 1 at this point next up we got one from that tall guy Cole the lights are too bright for the Oilers and they get swept or at least down in five I understand the sentiment of the lights being too bright when you're talking about a team where it's their first deep playoff run, their first playoff run at all. But Edmonton made the Western Conference Finals two years ago. They won a round last year. You look at the guys that they brought in recently. Corey Perry, goddamn five different teams, five cup finals, won a Stanley Cup. Matias Ekholm on the National Predators made a Stanley Cup final. Uh, Evander Kane has a shit ton of playoff success, playoff experience as well. There's not like it's not like the Panthers have been here. They, their core has been winning at a high level for five to seven years. I think Edmonton has adjusted to the bright lights. And again, it's Connor McDavid. He's had the lights on him his entire goddamn career. So I don't really, I don't really like that. If it was if it was the Vancouver Canucks versus the Florida Panthers, and it was the Canucks' first run with this core outside of like the bubble, but you're not playing in front of anybody. The brights, the lights aren't too bright there. Then maybe I'd get it. But I think this Edmonton team has 
as much experience for the most part than the Florida Panthers. It's not that besides playing like just in the cup final, the Florida Pan- the Edmonton Oilers in terms of like overall playoff games on the roster, it's probably comparable. They might even have the lead in terms of that. So I don't know about that one. Next up, Umar Razi says McDavid wins the con Smythe even if they lose. This is an interesting take. I've seen this floating around. The only problem I have with this, if it was like McDavid has 28 points in 15 games thus far and the next highest scorer on Edmonton was like 17 then I get it but the fact that their top three are all at this historic rate it's not just McDavid you look at when JG Jagger won it back in 2003 for the Anaheim Ducks when they lost New Jersey Devils none of the other Anaheim Ducks were playing at that high of a level back in 2003 it was like their leading scorer had like 17 points in 21 games it was just Jagger carried them throughout the entire playoffs. So although McDavid is the best player in this series and the best player in the world and the best player in the playoffs and has the most impressive stat line, and I can maybe see from an angle if Florida, say Matthew Kachuk, none of their guys really explode and their leading scorer only has 24 points in 22 games. I understand what you're saying in terms of McDavid being more valuable, but I think you need like a true carry. Like if Carey Price won, speaking of a true carry, if Carey Price won, or if Carey Price could have won it back in 2021, which the problem was Vasilevsky was also out of his goddamn mind. But that's an example of a guy absolutely carrying his team versus Edmonton. It's been three guys more so carrying their team. And even Zach Hyman has like 10, 11 goals in this year's playoffs. So I'm not sure McDavid, I, I, I honestly would disagree if McDavid ended up winning the Conn Smythe. I would not like to see that if I'm gonna be honest. Next up, Scott Talon, Edmonton, uh, Adam Henrique. Oilers X Factor getting seven plus points and dominating the Florida bottom six. I think that this is a decent take when looking at Adam Henrique. Yeah, he's the best third line center that the Edmonton Oilers have had during the McDavid and Dreisaitl era. He's been a little bit banged up, but I do think that he is a better third line center than an Anton Lundell from the Florida Panthers. And as we talked about it before, all Bennett, they're going to throw their top six against Edmonton's top six. Like, and Henrik's not going to have a tough matchup. He's going to be going up only against uh, Florida's bottom six. So maybe he could eat. Maybe that third line for Edmonton, although maybe isn't overall as good as the Florida Panthers. Like Edmonton's bottom six is not as good as Florida's bottom six, I would say. I think it's close. But Adam Henrik really could rise above and play a massive role like they expected when they traded for him. I could see Adam Henrik having seven points in nah, I can, have, I can see him having like five points in six games, but that would be massive. That would be massive for the Edmonton Oilers. Up next, Aiden, the ultimate hater. This guy's a Calgary Flames fan. I love this guy. Panthers wipe the Oilers in four games. It's the easiest final because Skinner shits the bed. Again, we thought Skinner was going to shit the bed against the Dallas Stars. He did it. That is just true hater talk. I got to respect it. My guy is a diehard Flames fan. Wink Carmo, Ocpozo scores the series winning goal. This is a hot take that I can get behind. I would love to see that. I am going to be rooting, even though I might not pick them. I'm going to be rooting for the Florida Panthers just because I want to see Kyle Ocpozo, New York Islander legend, get a Stanley Cup. I think that'd be awesome. We got another one coming to us from Mikhail 11 Speaking about how Skinner might outplay Bobrovsky, he talks about how Bobrovsky gets two shutouts. Then as a 940 save percentage, he wins the con Smythe. Yeah. Bobrovsky has not really been himself in terms of what he did last year, historic numbers through the Eastern Conference. He was very average, if we're going to be honest. He definitely, I'd say against Tampa Bay, he was actually pretty good. But overall, he's been pretty average. So if Bobrovsky decides, yeah, I'm going to turn back the clock, I'm going to play like I did last year in the playoffs, then Edmonton's going to have a really tough chance. Like I feel like no one's really talking about Bobrovsky possibly going nuclear, and I could see it. And then lastly, we got something from Luke Ward 9. He says, Edmonton is more likely to win in four or five than Florida. And speaking about, talking about what I talked about before about how Florida can slow down McDavid and Dreisaitl during the series. I think there's just going to be one or two games where those guys have multi-point nights, maybe three-point nights, that it's going to be tough. So I can understand where you're coming from. If Edmonton's special teams are clicking like we've seen before, I could see them winning in four or five. I'm not sure a sweep-wise. Maybe Florida can win in five. I think that's possible. But a sweep, I can't see Florida playing perfect defense on McDavid and Dreisaitl four straight games. That would be legend. Paul Maurice should win the Conn Smythe if that does happen. So I I, I I can see what he's going there. I think I like that take. I think I do probably agree with that take. Watch Florida's going to sweep them now. But thank you guys, everybody that submitted hot takes. Really appreciate it. Uh, I got my breakdown, full prediction and preview coming either again tomorrow or Friday. Not too sure yet. We're going to dive through every single sector of these teams and break it down. Who is the advantage? What my end prediction is. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one.